All I want is for my baby to come home. And if you see anything, please call so she can come home. Kishé Jacobs, she was 21 years old at the time of her disappearance. Um, Kishé was dropped off here by one of her friends, so I made them show me exactly where this house was. The person that was here answered the door. Then I proceeded to call the police to let them know that his story wasn't adding up and this was the last known place that my daughter was seen. In our reporting over the last six years, there has been a person of interest in this case. So I believe he gave her to someone. I believe my daughter's out there somewhere. In the years past, I've grown to know Tisha's mom. Uh, this woman has been through a lot. And whoever got her, I'm not stopping and I'm not giving up because that's my baby and you can't have her. Candace, neighbors say police searched this park yesterday afternoon. This is an area close to where 21-year-old Keisha Jacobs uh, was last seen. A woman who is close to her family, and they haven't heard from her in more than 10 days. I'd have had, like so many people coming to me, Ms. Jacobs, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to make it through my situation. I look at you, you inspire me. I was like, Y'all just don't know what goes on behind my doors. The days I cry, the days that I can't get out, I don't want to get up out of bed, but there's always something in the back of my head be like, you gotta get up. And if Quiche, if you can hear me, I love you with all my heart and soul. And mommy misses you, and I'm never giving up, baby. Um, Quiche was dropped off here by one of her friends about September 26th. Keisha Jacobs, she was 21 years old at the time of her disappearance. I specifically remember mom telling me that uh, her daughter would not run away, uh, even though police had said, well, she's an adult, she can go and come as she pleases. Mom was, was adamant about, this is not my daughter. My daughter and I communicate, even if, even if we have a rough patch or an argument, we still communicate. So she was very worried about her daughter and thought something had happened to her. So Wednesday came. That evening, I'm sitting in my living room with my son and a couple of my friends, and I get a knock on the door. It's Quiche friends, um, the guy DeMarcus, who dropped her off at the house. On, and, on Broad. On Broad Street. And a couple other friends. So I'd say it was like five or six of them. Then they proceeded to tell me that, hey, um, we went to the house that we dropped Quiche off at and the guy said that he didn't, she wasn't there. I was like, so you did what? What house is this? So I was very upset and was like, take me to this house. So I made them show me exactly where this house was, um, which was like maybe a few hours after they had already been to this home. So I was furious because that guy could have had any, enough time to do anything he wanted to do with my daughter by the time we got here. The person that was here answered the door and he said, yeah, he knew Quiche, but he knew Quiche through one of her friends. Um, he said he saw her. First, he said it was at 5 o'clock. Um, I told him that wasn't right. Then he changed it to 5.30. And then he changed it to 6. And then I proceeded to call the police to let them know that his story wasn't adding up. And this was the last known place that my daughter was seen. In our reporting over the last six years, there has been a person of interest in this case uh, however, we've never named him because he's never been charged with the disappearance of Quiche. Uh, this certain individual back then when Quiche disappeared had charges brought against him on the 19th of September of 2016. This is a week before Quiche disappears. And those charges were abduction, rape, and strangulation. The rape charge was dropped, but he was later sentenced for the other two crimes. Um, the police arrived. And, but he had called another detective here to the scene as well. So he allowed the other detective to walk through the house instead of the police that I called. I don't know who the detective is, but the, the very bizarre part of that is that uh, this certain individual called a detective who was working on a case that he had with him and told that detective to come up to the location. That detective told everybody to stay outside and he would go inside and look. Once you go out the back door, it's a basement. 
that's off the on the back porch. It leads down some steps. It's like underground, under the house, pretty much. I found that out. Um, and first, my first instinct was like, oh, this man could have had Kishay down in this basement the whole time when the police came to look or when that detective walked through the house and nobody would ever heard him because it is so far out of the house. It's like nobody would have known she was there. Has police shared any evidence whatsoever from that case that we know? They haven't shared much as far as evidence. We have learned through the years some of the stuff they've collected, but they've asked us not to leak it out there because obviously it could it could ruin their case. Like I drove by three days straight and forensic was there. So that's what I do remember of the case, that you go up there and the forensic van was parked out front and they were doing the thing. This is the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. I just want my baby to come home and if you see anything or think you've seen her, please call so she can come home and she can be okay. Mom. No more, no more. To me, I feel like the proper stuff with the police department wasn't done from the beginning when I reported Kishé missing because it took them a whole week before that they even took any interest or tried to do anything with Kishé's case. A lot of people in the community come forward, not only in Richmond, but throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. We've had sightings as far as Victoria, Virginia, Dinwiddie, Nottaway, and folks are calling us immediately after they're seeing the uh, um, news coverage on the uh, news from the 28th on. So we just ask that people continue to call us, give us those tips, let us track down those leads, and we just thank you so much for all you're doing. Breaking news about the disappearance of Kishay Jacobs. Richmond police say after 14 months of intense investigation, they believe foul play is involved. Uh, in the years past, I've grown to know Tony, uh, Kishay's mom. Uh, this woman has been through a lot. I remember when this first started happening and Tony would tell me about the mysterious Facebook and social media messages she would get. People put Kishay's face on a um, Muslim girl and say the Muslims have her. I had people call me playing on the phone saying, Mom, Mom, come get me. I done had people calling me, telling me if I pay them a certain amount of money, they could find my daughter for me. People just being so cruel. At first it was like heartbreaking because I was going to wherever I could and feeling like I'm supposed to do everything and go everywhere that people tell me they saw her. But then I realized a lot of it was people playing, being playing cruel jokes on me. You know, Kishay disappeared in September of 2016. Her son was murdered at the Motel 6 on Midlothian Turnpike months later. I'll never get to tell my son I love him again. And I'll never get to hear it again. And I'm just praying Kishé comes home so I can tell her I love her. The guy that was serving time for her son's death, the, the killer in her son's case, is already out and about. He's already served his time and he's out. So obviously that's bothersome for her and uh, it'd be, it would feel really good if we can get her some justice for this case. I don't believe I completely mourned my son's death. I, I haven't, I haven't, I can't, because I'm scared it's gonna take me to a place that I won't be able to come back from and be able to do what I need to do to still fight for Kishé, because I have to keep fighting for her. I just need somebody to put themselves in my shoes. What would you do if this was your loved one? And then my hope and I just pray that somebody would find it in their heart to say something, you know? And you can think of, I don't care if it's like the smallest thing, you know, just something. Because there's no way anybody can just disappear and nobody sees nothing and knows nothing.